So for this webinar, um, you have a few hosts. Unlike last time, it was mostly David and Cheryl. Um, my name is Lindsay Bork. I am the STEM, STEM Programs Director for RoboNation, and I am the director for the Seaperch Program, the international program. Um, today, uh, David Young and Cheryl Hedin will be joining us as well. David is our technical guru, and Cheryl is our community engagement guru. So they'll both have different different points to talk with you about today. And uh, just to let you all know, we are here and uh, happy to help you not just today, but through the forum and through email um, after this. So just know that we are just a phone call or email away um, and happy to help you on your Seaperch journey. Um, I also want to introduce uh, Juliana Smith, who is behind the camera, but is going to be taking some questions uh, from you all. So if you have questions as we're going through some of the topics on the webinar, please feel free to write a chat to us and we'll address those questions at the end of this. Any questions we're not able to get to during the webinar period, we will answer uh, via email and on the forum after this event. So for this webinar, we're going to cover three main topics. The first is the technical design report. Uh, that's new this year. So we want to walk through uh, the format of this report, the rubric, um, and then the value of still maintaining an engineering notebook and some of the tips that we see for success on that. Uh, the second topic is going to be citizen science projects. Uh, we had citizen science projects last year, um, but we're really working to, to beef those up this year. So we want to talk through that a little bit more with you. And then the third topic is our uh, how we're going to implement these these project components for the international challenge. So as a reminder, uh, teams must qualify at regional events to come to the international challenge, but we just like to make sure that our teams are prepared and know what to expect coming into that event. As a reminder, the webinar will not cover how to build a sea perch, how to start a program, how to host a competition, but we will be hosting more webinars moving forward and invite you to uh, shoot us an email and submit your ideas for webinars that you think would be helpful for you and your community. All right, so technical design report. Everybody had gotten used to the engineering notebook and this is a pretty big change. So before we get into what it is and how we're going to judge it, we want to talk a little bit about why we made this change. Uh, this change came for a variety of reasons. So one is that as we're evolving the Seaperch program, we are working to make it more applicable to real world content and skills that students will face in their future educational journey and in their future careers. And we feel like a design report that asks the students to reflect on the engineering design process writ large and also on the experience and to reflect and analyze how they may change how they approached it in future iterations is a really valuable skill and something that um, will serve them well moving forward. Uh, we also know, uh, all of us are in professional environments, that oftentimes when our boss asks us for information, they want it as concise and condensed as possible. And so we know that some of the guidelines and the length requirements this year are tight. Um, let the students know that we know that, that we're asking for a lot of information in really small, uh, really small sections. But that's part of the challenge and everybody's facing the same challenges and we're just really excited to see how students uh, are able to present what they've done in, in this this concise manner. Um, the other aspect of this is that we want our judges to really be introduced to the Seaperch program through the students' eyes, and we feel like this is a great way to do it. Um, the engineering notebook is a great way to document the process, and as David will talk to shortly, we really hope that teams continue to maintain that engineering notebook. And that notebook can be included as a part of the report, but it will not be scored. So we don't want students to feel like each of the, the documentation pieces that they're doing over the course of the, the design project are going to be scored, um, but that they can be compiled into this final report. And these guidelines have been posted online and walk through the instructions for the report, the different sections and the information that we hope to include 
then we'll move over to the rubric and we'll go a little bit deeper into how these different sections will be evaluated. So this paper, one of the biggest changes is that it has a five page limit for the primary sections. There are sections, including references, acknowledgements, and a few appendices that are not constrained to that five page limit, but the bulk of the paper is limited to five pages and we will be strict on that. Um, we have standard page sizes, margins, fonts, um, and formatting. And to be very clear, we are expecting all submissions to meet these guidelines. And if any of these guidelines are not met, the team will automatically lose 10 points. So that is included in the rubric this year. So we want to make sure that these, these guidelines are very clear. So if anybody has questions, again, post them on the forum and let us know. Um, and we'll make sure to, to make that as clear as possible. So for the paper contents, um, the paper will start with an abstract. Um, this is a really important part of any research project or any presentation is being able to synthesize information. So the idea of the abstract is just to summarize what's in the rest of the report and the students have a half a page to do that. The second section is the task overview. Again, they have a half a page to do this, but it's the first step in the engineering design process. So before any of us move forward with with building a sea perch or approaching a challenge, we have to first understand what the challenge is. So in this section, we're asking teams to, in their own words, describe the courses in the competition that their sea perch is expected to um, successfully uh, navigate and the uh, characteristics and features of the sea perch that they will need to have to make sure that they can um, address those challenges successfully. So this effectively is, is going into the rules and the course overview and describing it in their own words. So making sure that, that when they get into the design approach um, that they have thoughtfully made design changes and gone through iterations to, um, to successfully uh, complete those courses. The largest portion of this report is the design approach. So this is where a good chunk of um, the iterative design process will be discussed. It will be where we want the teams to talk about their strategy and approach. How did they work together? Did they set up different roles? Um, did they have a schedule that they uh, adhered to? This is where we want to learn more about how they approached getting to their final design. This is, uh, again, it's, it's two pages and it's a lot of information, um, but we're also hoping in this section that teams will include um, some graphics or a graphic um, so that it brings the design process and final design to life for reviewers. Um, and this is also where we expect to see some engineering and scientific terms. To be very clear, we want those terms to be embedded into the section and not called out in a separate glossary and top scoring teams will find a way to use those terms to enhance the information that's included in that section. The fourth section is talking about results. So as we say in the first line, there's a strong correlation between testing and performance. So we want to learn a little bit about how the teams went through this iterative design process. How did they know when they wanted to make a change and why? So we understand teams don't always have access to water. So there are simulation environments and, and different ways that they can do testing that can help to inform either their full design or aspects of their design. So we just wanna hear about those. We wanna know what those results were. Um, and in this section, we'd also like to see uh, charts, graphs, any figures that will highlight the data that was collected in those, uh, those tests. The fifth section is focused on reflecting on the experience. So as a team, we want to hear about um, what the team learned, what they enjoyed, what was challenging, um, and how they think it 
either changed or, or directed them in future endeavors. For the next steps, the team can focus on either what their next steps are as a team, or if it's more applicable, they can talk about what their next steps are for the ROV. We know many of the students coming in to these challenges have a plan for what they wanna do next, another iteration that they wanna to make to make it perform better. That is completely acceptable in this, in this section. On the other hand, uh, say we have a group of seniors competing and this will be their last secret competition or their last time doing something like this. If they wanna talk about the next steps for their team and how they're moving forward, either as a group or, or even potentially um, as individuals pursuing um, particular studies and how this experience kind of push them in that direction or, or, or influence them in some way, that's, that's completely fine too. So we'll leave it to the teams to decide whether they wanna focus this discussion on the ROV or on um, the team in general. So you'll notice we have a second section five. We're gonna fix that online. Um, so section six will be acknowledgements. There is no page limit on this, um, but it is a required section. We feel really strongly that it's important for all of us to recognize that um, none of us succeed on our own. And we would like teams to take a moment and to just acknowledge the individuals uh, the mentors, the, the organizations that have helped them to get to where they are in the competition. So we know it can take many forms. This can be advice, equipment, contributions, any kind of resources. Um, and it will not be judged any more than just judging that it is included in the report. The, what's noted is the sixth section, but the seventh section is references. Um, similar to the engineering notebook, we would like to see um, references and citations included within the paper. Uh, we're asking for APA to be the style guide that's used and for students to include in-text citations to really show us and the judges how they used that information and how it enhanced their experience and their understanding of uh, the engineering design process. We then have three different appendices. The first appendix is budget. Um, the budget's gonna fill two roles this year. One, um, as you all know, there is a $25 limit for our stock class divisions. So this will just be a place that teams can document what components were purchased and how they were incorporated into the design with a cost that will be totaled at the bottom. Um, it's just a way to, to really, again, showcase how the de design took shape. To be clear, this budget sheet only needs to include the components that are on the final competition C perch. It does not need to include components that were added and then subsequently removed um, because they, they didn't fit the bill for whatever it was the team was trying to do with them. Um, at the International Challenge, we will also be using this budget to, uh, to conduct triage and to make sure that teams are in the appropriate classes. So for teams coming to the International Challenge, we will ask if any revisions have been made to the CPERG sense registration that they bring an updated budget. The second appendix is something fun that we're doing this year, um, and that's a fact sheet. So we want to have effectively a one-pager on each team and each C perch. And this is um, really high level, just includes the team name, where the team's from, an image of the team C perch, and then um, a highlight of right here, what competition class they plan to be in. And then this section is dedicated to a 100 word overview of the team's sea perch design. So just when you thought the abstract was tough at half a page, um, we'll have to get the students um, that are, are good at tweeting and uh, pushing things out in just a few words to really pick those words carefully and provide an overview of their, their unique design. 
Um, then we want to know a little bit more about the team. How many years did they participate in Sea Perch? And how many times have they been at the International Sea Perch Challenge? This fact sheet will be required for the International Challenge. Um, and for any teams out there, make sure to check with your uh, respective regional coordinators to see if they want this for their regional competition as well. These other two sections right here, 50 words each, uh, just want to know a little bit about what makes the team Sea Perch unique and then what their biggest takeaway is. The final section on the bottom is an image of the team with a listing of each of the team members' first names and grade level, and then the mentors' full names and organization. At the International Challenge, we will be uh, using these so that teams can see uh, the designs and learn a little bit more about each of the team's experiences and, and use it as a way to promote some more networking um, and information sharing between the teams. The final section, um, the or final appendix, is the only optional component uh, included in these guidelines, and that's the engineering notebook. So I won't go into the engineering notebook much because David's going to do that in a few minutes, um, but just know that teams that feel like there was more information that they wanted to share that they couldn't in the limited sections of their report are welcome to include their engineering notebook, and they may even reference that within their report. So let's go into the rubric a little bit. You'll notice it looks different than what we've had for the, uh, the engineering notebook. And we want to walk through how we plan to use this and how the teams will be scored. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have scoring guidelines at the top. With the exception of one section, each line item on this rubric will be graded on a scale of zero to four. Zero is poor, means requirements are missing, and exceptional is four points. To be very clear, uh, exceptional is, is really, we, we debated for a while about whether to put superior or something else, but um, we expect that about 10% of the teams will get, will get fours. So, teams will have to go above and beyond what is required to be able to get that four. Um, if they do everything by the book and, and what's, what is asked of them in the guidelines, they'll get a three, which is excellent. Um, so just let your teams know that uh, when they're, they're working through their report, how can they just take their report up just a little, little notch more, whether that's through, um, a graphic or a reference or some other way that they can can drive home the point of their experience. So I'll quickly go through the rubric sections and then um, again feel free to chat us with any questions that we can address in the Q&A section um, or if you as you have time to dig into this a little bit more uh, post any questions you have on the forum. So the abstract section has a max point um, of eight and the first line is teams will be judged on whether they've limited it to half a page so if they provide a page long abstract they will get zero points instead of two so it's it's an easy way for teams following the rules to get those two points um, and then the next two sections are tied to you know, did the abstract include a summary of the report and does it describe what makes the team's ROV or their design process unique? In the task overview, the first line again is, is connected to the length of the section. And then the focus in this area is, is evaluating the team's overview of the competition tasks and did they provide a justification to their design approach? So why did they make the decision that they made or, or what did their sea perch have to accomplish? That section has a 10 point max. The third section, as I mentioned, is, is the longest one. So it has the, the highest number of points. Uh, the total points in this section are 25. So again, is it limited to two pages? It's an easy way to get two points. And then we've broken this down into sections for what we hope to see. So the first, is the team's approach to the EDP. How did they work together? 
and you know, did that evolve over time? So did they have a strategy? Did they follow it? And how did that work? Um, we expect to see design iterations, so they will be evaluated on that. With those design iterations, um, we'd like to see drawings or graphics. To be clear, this is only two pages, so teams are welcome to decide how to incorporate their drawings, whether it is one graphic or multiple small graphics, and we'll leave that up, up to them, but we would like to see some kind of graphic in that section. And then of course, we'd like to see an overview of the final design. The uh, last two sections, um, the second to last one's focused on a discussion of the novelty of the approach and the design. So similar to what was in the abstract, this is just an extended discussion of really what makes the team's ROD unique. Why do they think they performed so well at their regional or why do they think they're going to perform so well at their regional? And then the last section is um, scoring the scientific and engineering terms that are included. Within the experimental results section, there's a total of 14 points available. Again, is it limited to one page or not? Um, and then the three different sections are tied to an overview of the testing that was done. Then the impact that that testing had on subsequent designs. And then the, the final area is the test results to just show us that data and let us know how they used it. In reflection, the next steps, the max points is 10. Again, is it limited to one page or not? And then breaking up that section into two different areas is their reflection on the process and their discussion of what, what the next steps are. As I mentioned, for acknowledgments, the only uh, points that are tied to that is just whether it's included in the report or not. For references, it will be evaluated on, does it follow the APA format? And do the references support the report? So there are a total of five points for references. Um, and this is one section where students will be evaluated, not just what's on in the reference section, but how it's incorporated into the report. So as you can note, to get a, uh, a score of three, we expect that uh, the references will be cited in the report and not just listed in the references section. For the budget section, it's just two points. Again, it's if the section's there, they're gonna get two points. We're not gonna evaluate the budget or how the budget was used. For the fact sheet, uh, again, it's, it's zero or two points, two points if it's included, and then um, up to four points for the content that's included in the fact sheet. So the fact sheet area has a total of, of six points. Then the final two sections are really focused on um, the writing in the report and then following the guidelines. So in the writing skills section, we're gonna be evaluating organization, readability, and spelling and grammar. Grammar. These are all things I think we can agree are important and significantly impact the, um, the, the power that the report has in telling the story of, of the team's engineering design process. For the organization section, um, it is expected that all team reports will follow the, the structure listed in the guidelines. So we would like to see each of these sections in these orders. So this organization is, is not just tied to that, but also, for example, in, in the section that's two pages. How were those two pages broken up? Did it, did it help promote readability? Did it help to, to flow through the report? Or did it make it, make it challenging? Did it ramble a little bit? Um, readability is, is exactly as it sounds. Is it clear? Is it focused? And is it cohesive? Um, and then spelling and grammar, I think, I think we all know what to expect there. So paper format, this is, is kind of where we started. Um, teams that follow all formatting guidelines will automatically be given 10 points. And if any of these formatting guidelines are missed, they will not get those 10 points. 
um, we've included a note. In the past, we've asked for engineering design notebooks to be provided handwritten. Um, we would love for uh, electronically developed and submitted reports this year, so please feel free to use computers when creating your report. Um, but for teams that maybe don't have access to a computer or that um, would just like to, to handwrite their report, they are welcome to do that. Uh, the challenge here is that all of these guidelines, with the exception of we don't expect them to write in Times New Roman 12 point font, I think it'd be kind of hard. Um, all the rest of those formatting guidelines will, will stay the same. So, that is the new technical design report and the rubric. I'm now gonna pass it over to David to talk a little bit about the um, engineering notebook and how that can be incorporated this year. Great. Uh, one thing I do wanna say, I don't think we'll get any complaints that students do not have to rewrite the 24 page notebook the day before they turn it in. Uh, so kudos for the technical design report and coming up with that. Uh, the notebook, it's, although it's optional, it's not required, it can be included in the appendix, uh, but it's still highly recommended that teams keep a notebook throughout the project. And this is important because this could be the, it should be the source for your technical design report. Uh, so they're keeping their notebook and then the technical design report is really going to be put together toward the end of their pro uh, project. But it's also important if you have a follow on program, you continue the CPERCH program year after year, your follow on teams will be able to use their students' notebook from prior years to see what their success, you know, successes were, or failures in the past. Uh, so, especially important for follow on teams as well. So, just kind of think about that as the future. Uh, the engineering notebook, as I said, it, it can be included. It's not scored though. Even if it is included, it will not be scored. Teams do not have to follow the formatting rules that are set forth in the guidelines, the 2019 guidelines that are available on the engineering process page of our website. Uh, so totally disregard those. It should still be neat enough that someone reading it can actually read it. Uh, and especially there again, follow on teams, or maybe you're gonna look back on something that you wanna pull information for the technical design report. So it's, it's pretty important that it is neat. Uh, in general, it's good to stress the importance to your teams of having an engineering notebook, since they may be required to keep an engineering notebook in their careers if they're engineers, uh, it's important for inventors uh, because it does, it can, an engineering notebook can serve as a legal document, uh, proof of invention or proof of intellectual uh, property ownership. And it, it should be, an engineering notebook should be carefully and systematically uh, would be used to document the design steps, procedures, and test results throughout their project. So, you know, we still want, we still would like to see that. I think it's a, a very good thing. There are other programs that use engineering notebooks and, you know, careers, career fields will definitely uh, use those. So we have included the 2019 engineering notebook guide is still available as a reference on the Super Challenge engineering uh, process page on the website. We put a link in the chat window earlier, so uh, reference that. There are also many good references on the internet. Just look up Engineering Notebook. MIT has a very good, they call there's a lab notebook instructional document. It is referenced in our 2019 Engineering Notebook Guide, so you can find a good reference there. Uh, going on to tips for uh, the successful completion of a technical design report now. Uh, so this is just how to help your students. And if, you're, if you happen to be a student on the, on the webinar today, how to help yourself. So thoroughly read the technical design report instructions and the scoring rubric. In the past, when I have been part of the, the engineering design process, uh, the engineering notebook, and prior to that, the posters, it was pretty amazing to me 
that it was it became very evident that some teachers and students just really didn't read the information we gave them so they didn't know what they were being judged on uh, we've got a lot of free points embedded in there in the rubric uh, 10 points just for simply following the rules so that there's a you know there's some free points and that's that's one of the big tips follow the rules follow the rubric uh, go through it discuss it with the teams pay very uh, close attention to detail and then of course for teachers make sure the students really understand what they're doing why they're doing and what they're supposed to be doing in this um, so you know have a, a really hands-on approach with your students and you know make sure the students know the science and engineering behind their design and this will definitely show up in the technical design report you know the judges will will be really able to tell if they've just copied information and, and just reiterated information um, so that and then also if they uh, are able to present if they are presenter then the judges can really pick up on whether the students really know the information or are they just reiterating something they have read on the internet or Wikipedia. So uh, have a couple third parties to judge the reports using the rubric and then discuss the scores with the students. So this is very, very helpful. We, we are asked frequently after our challenge, and I'm sure if you are a regional coordinator, you're asked also for feedback on these. Well, give, let the students have an opportunity to get some feedback before they enter the competition. So just some third party judging, really go over it, discuss it, make sure that they then really understand uh, what's going on with the rubric and how they, you know, some deficiencies and, and some things that they've done very well. So there's some tips for success for, for the students and I hope everyone uh, you know, really, really enjoys this process this year. Uh, saw some really good notebooks in the past, so I expect that we're going to see some really good technical design reports. And with that, back to Lindsay. Hello again. Um, thank you, David. So now we're going to move from the technical design report over to the citizen science projects. Um, you're probably noticing a theme as we continue to talk over these months, and that is real world relevance. So as you all know, CPERCH is a competition, but it's also a program. So one of the things we're looking to do is to find ways to um, improve networking opportunities to connect the program to all of our respective communities and to really highlight the ways that robotics and autonomy can be used in a variety of different forms. So Sea Perch is an underwater remotely operated vehicle. So clearly we're coming up with some underwater projects that we think students can engage in. Um, with this year's theme of waterway cleanup, there are a plethora of ways for students to use their Sea Perch to have some kind of impact on their local communities. So we'd really like to see what students are doing. We know that many groups are already doing this in their communities. And so we just wanted to provide a couple of prompts or a few prompts uh, to, to start that discussion and to uh, find ways for students who maybe aren't interested in competition or who really are interested in competition, just wanna do something a little bit more with Sea Perch to, to connect with that. So on that note, I'm going to pass it over to Cheryl who will provide an overview of citizen science this year. Lindsay, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. As Lindsay shared, our waterway cleanup theme this year is following through into our citizen science projects. This is our second year of doing the citizen science projects and it's just a way for students to take the ROVs that they've built, designed and tested to compete and find fun and exciting ways to actually use them in the real world and make the real world connections to what they're doing and what they're studying. So this year we are presenting four different options for citizen science abstracts or projects. Uh, if you haven't taken a look on the website, the link is at the bottom of this, uh, this slide for more information about what might actually be involved in considering one of these. Uh, there's four different ones. 
And these are not required. They're not required. They will not be scored. So there is no right answer when it comes to submitting a citizen science project. Um, we just want to see what students can come up with for unique and creative solutions. And these are the four you can choose from, either floating or sunken debris cleanup. Um, that would be investigating uh, a prototype or an attachment that could be put on their sea perch to remove or collect floating or sunken marine debris. The third one, sample and data collection, uh, there's any number of apps that you can find to actually collect data about debris that you find in your local waterways. NOAA has a really good one. Um, just a quick internet search of marine debris, you'll get any number of results, but NOAA, it has a really good one. That might be a good one to start with. Um, and the fourth one, with preventing. Um, the, the issue of marine debris is completely preventable. So making students aware of what they can do locally, at home, in their schools, um, in their civic organizations, to actually prevent the problem before it ever happens. So whether that's through a media campaign or um, changing their personal use habits of, of plastic, whatever they can think of. The parameters on these are intentionally broad. We don't give a lot of guidance or guidelines on these. So this is your chance to really take your sea perch and take it to the next level. The intent is to get students thinking about what they can do in their community to make a difference and how their sea perch can be a part of that. So in doing research for the citizen science projects, we found uh, this six degrees of separation slide that I thought was really interesting to make students aware that how a plastic bag from a store can eventually end up into our marine wildlife and waterways. It's, um, it was eye-opening for me to see that and um, probably for your students as well. Ocean Conservancy is another good resource for researching these citizen science projects. And we're excited to see what you come up with. And you can share, um, we're, we're investigating ways for citizen science projects to be shared for those who cannot participate at the International Challenge in May. Um, you can share them at info at seaperch.org or on social media with the hashtags you see here on the screen. And with that, I'll pass it back over to Lindsay. Thank you, Cheryl, I appreciate it. Um, to add to Cheryl's comments, uh, the virtual sharing component, we are, we are looking into platforms and we've sound, found some really cool ones. Um, anybody who's seen a cute baby contest or a cute dog contest, we want this to be a, um, a sea perch in the wild type of contest. So one of the really fun parts of Sea Perch and one of our favorite parts of the competition is seeing all of the different Sea Perches and we want to make sure that students, teams, mentors, um, local sponsors, national sponsors have the opportunity to do that as well. Um, so as Cheryl said, share it on social media or send it to us and, and we'll share it and make sure it gets out there. Um, and then in January, uh, we're hoping to introduce a way for teams to share that through our website and then to look at some of the other submissions that have uh, been provided. To be clear on this, um, we of course would love you to use one of our four prompts for your citizen science project, but there are a huge number of applications. So if, if your students are already working on a, a project that would fit into the category of citizen science or sea perch in the wild, feel free to share that. We love seeing uh, sea perch designs evolve and, and seeing how they're being used in communities. The Second portion of this is that uh, we know that um, citizen science being a new component, um, when we have a lot of educators that are just filled to the brim already with the work that they're doing, it's sometimes hard to think about how to incorporate a new program component. So in January, for anybody that's interested, we are planning on hosting a roundtable style 
uh, webinar where we will just have a discussion with folks. Uh, we want people to come with ideas for how they're incorporating it into their classrooms or how they think it would work in a program, you know, whether that's an after school program, um, a club, uh, homeschooling, any type of implementation model that you're using for CPERCH. We'd like to hear how you think it would work to incorporate this. Um, so come with questions, come with ideas, um, and we'll send more information out about that. But again, January is when we're, we're looking to do that. So I am going to uh, pass the mic back over to Cheryl for just a minute to talk a little bit about how these different components relate to the international challenge. Uh, we know everybody's getting excited. February is coming fast and, and so is the end of May. Um, so just to, uh, to share a little bit more about how the, the technical design report and the citizen science projects will be included in that event. Thank you, Lindsay. The, the first thing probably that everyone is wondering is when will these um, notebooks or technical design reports, when are they due? And that date is April 30th. That is also the registration deadline. So that's an important date to keep in mind. These will be judged by a panel of judges, scored, ranked, and the top teams will be offered a chance to present, much like last year, to their peers. We have not determined how many presentation slots will be available at this point. More information will be coming on that, but it will be a chance for students to present in a conference type uh, professional atmosphere and get the experience in talking to their peers and their mentors about their designs and how they got to the international challenge. The citizen science projects uh, will also be due April 30th and they will be submitted along with the technical design reports for those who choose to do the citizen science projects. Again, those are not required, but we would very much encourage you to do those if at all possible would be the forum, the place that we have set up to help you help yourself. So the forum is where you should ask all questions regarding the challenge. Uh, going forward, we get a lot of emails still, uh, but this is the place that the forum is your go-to uh, information hub. So ask your questions there, drill down, make sure you're asking the, uh, posting them in the appropriate topic fields, and then also, uh, search the forum first because someone may have already answered the question or someone may have already asked and hopefully it has been answered. Um, so, you know, what else can I say other than this is your place to go. If you send us emails, we, we may answer your email, but we're also going to then direct you to the forum. And the thing is not that we don't want to be bothered with your emails, is that we want to benefit everyone in the community, everyone in the CPERCH program, everyone that's going to participate in a challenge with seeing that question and then seeing the answer to it. So that's really the reason that we want you to post using the forum. It's also a place that you can make connections if you're a regional coordinator, a teacher, or just someone doing the CPERCH uh, challenge, to, uh, participating in it then this is a place that you can also make connections. It's also a place that you can suggest uh, webinar topics going, going, um, going forward. And there is a webinar topic uh, that's kind of funny. You're going to post a suggestion for a webinar topic in the webinar topic area on the forum. So that kind of wraps it up. And now it's back to Lindsay. Thank you. Um, so now is when we open it up to questions. The first question is, do open class teams need to document their budget in the technical design report? I can tackle that one. Yes, even though there is no budget requirement, it will still be part of an engineering project to always have to keep a budget. So we would like to see that. Um, one of the reasons is to make sure you really belong in the open class. So we have got teams in the past, they weren't over budget, they had nothing special, but for some reason they entered open class. So if you present your budget, 
as required in the technical design report, then that will allow us to, to one thing, know that you belong in open class if you are in open class. So otherwise, it is definitely a requirement. So yes. All right. Uh, question number two. If the notebook is referenced, should it be in the reference page on the technical design report? Great question. Yes, it should. It's a good practice to reference all materials uh, in the references section that we use uh, or to cite all references that we use. Um, so even if you're referencing yourself, include it in there. It's really good practice. Um, it's a unique format. So, uh, so go ahead and include that in your references as well. Another question has come through. You said you want to see the design reiterations, graphics or pictures, but with limited or writing space. How do you recommend teams with six to seven reiterations do it? That's a good question, isn't it, Lindsay? It is a good um, <laughs> So they are, there's a, they're really limited to space this year in the, in the technical design report. And they are going to have to come up with creative ways to do that. So um, they may not be able to show a full size view of every iteration, but they need to at least indicate somehow that there are different iterations. So it, it, it's just not going to be possible to show all the details for that many iterations, but you know, they should be able to reference that they had six iterations and maybe even show, you know, a larger section of, of one of them. But, you know, part of this is, is also creativity. In, in this program. So, you know, when, when we gave students opportunity to be creative with the notebooks, we saw some very creative notebooks and presentations. So, you know, I hate to kind of pass the buck back to the person asking the question and back to teachers, but there is definitely limited space and they're gonna have to be really creative about how they approach this. Um, the other piece of this is that uh, how that space is used is really gonna be dependent on the design process that each of the teams undertook. So if they have two design iterations, they may be able to delve into them a bit more. If they had 20 design iterations, they're probably not going to be able to discuss each one individually. Remember that this report is, is supposed to be a high level overview of the process and the experience. So we would like the teams to really focus in on the areas that they felt were most impactful in getting to that final design. So say they had 10 design iterations and three of them, it was small tweaks that they decided to make. Maybe just a reference that in those three iterations, that's all that came out of it and diving really into the, the few that had the biggest impact on the final design uh, is the right way to go. But you know, to David's comment, we uh, rely on each of the teams and the mentors uh, to provide guidance to the teams on uh, what model may work best for them and to, to try it out. Um, again, we recognize that this is a, a different kind of challenge, but it is a really important skill going into the real world. Um, so everybody just do your best and, and we can't wait to see what you, you share with us. Well, thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, it's, it's great to have you here. It's great to have you as a part of the community. Um, we're excited to be doing this, to have at least a little bit more of a connection to you all um, and look forward to continuing to do them in the future. Um, we know that for many of you, this is after hours and this is an added um, volunteer opportunity for you to engage. So thank you for taking the time and the forum is open and ready for questions. So we look forward to talking to you moving forward and uh, we hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thank <laughs> you.